each exam runs for about a half a day. From 2 to 10 p.m. they start and the exams last an hour and a half or two hours depending upon how many questions I give them. And like I said, you have hundreds of students so you know the one thing you're always worried about is that if the students kind of collaborate together and get together in a group and they say, okay, this is exam one, you're going to go take the exam at 2 o'clock. When you get done, you come and tell us. Okay. So my s solution to that is just to have so many variations on this exam that it won't do them any good. So I figured it out in one exam that I gave last semester there was actually about 9,700,000 exams that could have been possible. So the person that took the exam at two isn't going to get the same exam that the people at five and eight is. So the way you do this is uh, you take advantage of some of the things that Canvas will do for you that, that allow you to randomize. You can randomize by putting things in a question bank and then picking you know, put 20 questions in a question bank and say each student gets 10 of them. Each question can be randomly generated according to various strategies. So that's basically how I got so many variations on, on the exam. Okay, well, this shows you a little bit of what Canvas can do for creating random questions. This is a very simple little question where, I mean, it's a statistics question, so they eventually are going to need to do some calculations in Excel. This is one where they, I give them a statement and I say, okay, you have a sample of N people and in that sample, X of them said they agreed with this particular statement and you're supposed to use that information to, to come up with the answer according to what value of N and X that you had. So, the, in a formula question in Canvas, you have a numerical answer and you need to specify what values of N and X would show up. And you can have five different sets of values or you can have 50, it's up to you. So this is what the code looks like that actually generates the right answer, or generates the questions and then generates the right answers to that question. So I am on the, uh, this question basically says the value of X, the number of people that agreed with that statement is going to be somewhere between 90 and 145. The number that were in the survey is somewhere between 200 and 300. So, and it shows you the example here that, you know, I got 244 for N and 95 for the X value on this particular version of the exam. And then you need to go through and you need to compute the correct answer by simple formula calculations. So this one basically says compute the proportion. The second statement computes the proportion. It's what, 0.389 on this version. And then you're just doing a simple statistical operation with that proportion. And the end result of this is that the correct answer of 95 and 244 were the generated values. The correct answer should be 0.1224. And I'll say, okay, and then in the question they would record a numerical answer. I told them to use four decimal places. I would put some kind of a tolerance on that. So I'd say it doesn't have to be exactly 0.1224 plus or minus what, 0.004 or something like that. Whatever you feel like putting in there. Although, if they're supposed to use a computer program to generate this, probably don't need to give them any margin of error because they either did it right or they didn't. But I usually give them a little bit for that anyway. Okay, and you can, like I said, you can build up that formula. The, stu the, the statements get calculated one at a time and whatever is the last statement is going to be what the correct answer should be for that variation of the exam. And then just tell them, well, I want 50 variations of this question. So it just tells you how many to generate and, you know, I usually don't do 50, 10 or so is usually good enough. Now, that's fine. That's a random 
generate a question that the trouble is you can't do an awful lot with questions like this because most of the time the statistical calculation that you need is just way too complicated for to, to, to do inside Canvas. So in other words, I can't compute the right answer on most questions. So what I need to do is that I need to, I need to do something outside it, okay? And these are, the, these are the type of things that you can put into Canvas questions. So I don't know if you look on there, I mean, there's, there's what, 15, 20, maybe 30 different statements you could use. Some of you know arc signs and cotangents and I'm oh, sorry I don't need most of these things are not things that I would need to do, particularly in a statistics course. So for many tasks you need to do the computation outside of Canvas. The students would need to do it, and then you would need to compute the correct answer outside of Canvas. And if you're going to compute the correct answer outside of Canvas, you don't want 50 variations of it. You only want maybe four or five, okay? So that's basically what this is about. This is the, how you would have five versions of a question. I'm actually showing you three versions, but it's very easy to expand it. How would you have three versions of the same question and then provide the right answer for the students to calculate? To, for the students to be graded against. Okay, so the key to this is to use the if function. The reason why I need to use the if function is that I'm gonna generate a random version of the question for each student to deal with. So I'm gonna generate some number called version and I'm gonna need to use the if statement to check and see whether or not they have version one two, three, or four, or five, whatever. All right, and the way the if statement works, it's fairly simple. You give it three arguments. It evaluates the first argument. If it's equal to zero, it assigns the third number in that list. If it's equal to anything but zero, it gives you the second number in that list. So what I'm gonna do is basically use this to check and see if they had version three, okay? I'm gonna check and see if they had version three on the exam, okay? So, or is it version one or two? So I'm gonna have a, these if statements in there. All right, so the tasks that I typically assign them, like I said, in, in a statistics course, that I want them to, to, get, to get a data set and I want them to work with a portion of the data set and I don't want everybody to work with exactly the same problem, so what I will typically do is I'll create an Excel file, and then I'll have multiple columns in that Excel file, and I'll say, okay, the first question they see on the exam is this little header question where it says, you're going to need to download this file, assessed value, because you're going to need to do some computations with this. And the, the first time the students see this, it's a little bit unusual, but they see it, you know, in my class, they'll see it about 15, 20 times over the semester. So they get used to it pretty quick. So they download the data, and this is what this particular file looked like. There's three neighborhoods, Sorrento, Elm Valley, and Montrose, and Sorrento's in Gainesville, but I don't think the other two are. Doesn't matter, they're just names for it and I will assign them to work with column A, B, or C, okay? On question one, they might get A, and then on question two, they might get C. So it isn't always gonna be the same. Yeah. Back a slide before where you're doing the if then, or the if statement, was that in Canvas or in Excel? No, that is, that is something that goes right in Canvas, and you'll see that next, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna assign them to work with one of those columns, and the next thing I need to do is I need to write a question that tells them once you have this data set, what are you supposed to do? So I would have about five of these questions in a typical test. I would usually have about five questions where they deal with the data set and then five questions where they're standalone. They're probably random as well, but uh, okay. So I go here and I say, all right, you've got this little file of assessed values 
there's three neighborhoods, and then right underneath the table, which describes things a little bit about what the file is about, right underneath that I'll have a statement that says, hey, you're going to do version number one, or you're going to do version number two. It depends, I mean, how many versions there are. Obviously, in this case, I would have three versions because there's only three columns in the file. But like fairly, usually I do about five versions. Okay. All right. So it says you're going to do this for version five or version three or whatever. And then right underneath that, it'll tell them what they're supposed to do. One minute. Okay. All right. Good thing I'm almost done. <laughs> so then, all right, so they've got, this assigns the task that they're going to do. Their answer should be this four decimal place number that the software computes for them. And then over here, this is how you check and see what's the right answer, okay? So what you do is that you first of all have to put in the correct answers. So those first three statements, ANS1, ANS2, and ANS3 are the correct answers to the different versions of the problem, okay? And then the next six statements, it's unfortunately what you have to do in Canvas, because Canvas doesn't have a real rich if-then, else type programming statement that a lot of languages do. So you have to check to see whether or not what version you got. And then the last statement down here is kind of creative. It basically, it finds out which version you were assigned and then it, then it picks the right answer through a multiplication. The key to this thing is that only one of these three variables here is going to be a one, and that's the one for the version you got. So only one of these three numbers is going to actually appear as the end. Okay. And so that's the correct answer to the get. And like I said, you can make this, you can do this with five versions. You can do it for other type of questions. You just need to be able to supply a numerical answer. Question here. How do you get to this window and what question type do you choose? This is a formula question because you go into Canvas and do a formula question and then, you know, you put these program statements in there to build the right answer. Okay. I think this PowerPoint's online, isn't it? They can see the PowerPoint. We'll have online. Yeah. We have handouts already online. Yeah, I mean that this is really this is that's really good to have a template for one of these problems. So once you figure it out for one question, you got it for all of them. You just keep modifying the old one. All right. And like I said, a variation on this theme would be a multiple choice question. So suppose you have questions, a multiple choice question, don't use A, B, C, or D. Use one, two, three, four, or five. Give the, give the right answer one, two, three, or four, depending upon the version. And so you have a multiple choice question where the answer changes depending upon which version of the multiple choice question they got in the first place. Okay. That is my idea. Now, like I said, it's this logical arithmetic that allows you to create multiple versions of the same question, as, as many as you want. And I know I went too long, but that's okay. <laughs> Thank you very much.